Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'da. Habitu billah. A question was asked. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If a beginner student in fiqh comes across different opinions with their evidences, can he choose between the views if a certain views if a certain view sounds more convincing than other views because of its evidences? <coughs> and the second question, when should a beginner, for example, follow the safest view or the view of the majority? If a layman loses the contact to a sheikh, he usually consults when questions come up. Can he ask another sheikh instead and follow him? Is this kind of switching permissible? Should it be avoided? May Allah Azza wa Jal increase us all in beneficial knowledge and enter us into his Jannah of Rados. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Uh, first and foremost, uh, a beginning student of knowledge, if they come across different opinions and their evidences, uh, can he choose between the views if a certain view sounds good, sounds more convincing than other views because of its evidences? So if he has the tools, even though he's a beginner, but it depends on, you know, even that term is uh, subjective. So as a beginner, it depends on what kind of basic knowledge that he does have in his studies uh, to be able to discern between what is the strongest evidences. So if you don't have those tools, then of course, you will <clears throat> generally be studying uh, with your sheikh and according more than likely to a particular madhab, or you'll be studying maybe fiqh sunnah and you'll be taking whatever your teacher or your sheikh has uh, as a view, as your viewpoint. So, of course, whatever sounds the most, uh, seems the most in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then those are uh, the viewpoints to, uh, to, to adhere to. Because we're not ordered to follow a madhab, we're not ordered to follow particular individuals, but we're ordered to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the best of our ability. And obviously, if you don't have those tools, then you are in more of a position of making taqlid. So generally, when you are studying with uh, scholars and, and doing durus and, and so forth, for example, here in Saudi Arabia, that <clears throat> most, of, most of the lessons... Uh, when you study with the scholars here will be the the books they were used are generally Hanbali fiqh. So generally they are their views are in accordance with the madhab uh, and they do not uh, encourage people to blind follow nor do we find that the ulama here blind follow but rather they will take views when it comes to masail of what they feel is the qawl or raja, what they feel is the most, the strongest evidence. And that's because they have the tools to look at the madhahab. You know, they look at the different madhabs and they look at the different evidences to see which evidence is the strongest viewpoint. So when you're a beginning student, you don't usually have that, that those tools to do that. So more than likely, you will take the, the opinion of your sheikh and so as not to, <coughs> not to be confused, it's good to just study the text and, uh, that your sheikh and, and, and go along with that until you have more knowledge and more tools and more usul, uh, a stronger foundation to where you're able to look at the different aqwal and uh, make a, you know, find a, uh, find that which is strongest in accordance with the evidences. Uh, when should a beginning student, for example, follow the safest view or the major view of the majority? So again, it you know those those are kind of strange questions because it isn't really about a student striving to follow the rule of the majority. Uh, the safest view, as far as some some issues are very, uh, you know, for example, issues in tahara or issues in you know, that have uh, a lot of implications upon with regards to the hukum. So a lot of times, 
uh, you may want to take the safest view. And the safest view, what does that mean? The safest view generally is <clears throat> the safest view depends on the mas'ala. So it could be, for example, the mas'ala of the issue of uh, does touching the private parts break the wudu or not? What does the safest view mean? The safest view means that it does break your wudu. So if you brush your private parts by accident, even with a towel, after you've you've cleaned yourself and you're drying yourself with a towel and your bare hand rubs against your private part, the safest view in that issue is that you would make, uh, you would say, oh, my wudu is broken. So to be on the safe side, you would make wudu. So that's what that means for the safe view. So you, these are very general questions. You can't really say the safest view and, you know, without talking about a particular issue or something. Um, and as far as the taking the jamhur, the majority opinion, you know, we don't just pick and choose everything is jamhur, but we want to go with what the uh, idn Allah ta'ala, what is the strongest uh, opinion that the ulama have already deduced and looked at these masail and we choose from those aqwal of ahl sunnati wal jama'a that that are most in accordance with the evidence okay so that but that takes fiqh that takes some understanding it takes background it takes usul it takes a foundation so the lay person generally is in a position of learning and uh more dependent upon taqlid if a lay person loses the contact to a sheikh of course uh it's not about taking from a tic- particular sheikh uh Ever that you have to just take one uh, view of a particular scholar. But however you're doing talib al-ilm at the feet of a particular scholar, if you are in that situation, that doesn't mean you just blind follow your sheikh. But of course, that's who you're learning with. So until you have the tools, and unless you have other lessons, and that's the na'mah of being able to study with different mashaykh at the same time, meaning you're studying fiqh with this sheikh maybe, and you're studying another book with this sheikh, some aqidah with this sheikh, <coughs> all mashaykh of ahl sunnati with jama'ah. And so this helps you to be more rounded, okay, and less dependent upon just uh, one particular scholar. So there's nothing that is going to, uh, uh, there is no problem if you ask other scholars uh, for a viewpoint. And you're not obligated to blindly follow any particular individual. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.